everybody and welcome to tonight's video where we are going to be talking about different formulas for finding the area of a triangle. And we'll start with our basic formula that we all know and probably remember from geometry class, which is that the area of a triangle equals one half times the base times the height. And this works when we have a right triangle or when we have an oblique triangle with the height or an altitude drawn in. And that's because the height here is represented by an altitude, which is a line that's drawn from the vertex of a triangle to the opposite side. It's a, it's a perpendicular line that's drawn from the vertex to the opposite side. So in this case, um, that's represented by this line here in our oblique triangle. And so we have a B times and an H that we just plug into our formula. In this case, since a right triangle has a line that is drawn from a vertex to an opposite side, uh, that acts as the height. So again, we can plug in the B times the H. So if we have this situation, it's great, and we just use our formula that we know. Well, what if we don't have a right triangle, or we're not given the height uh, if, if we have an oblique triangle? So what we're going to do is we'll use what we know about right triangle trigonometry and we could come up with these different formulas. So if we were to draw in an altitude in this triangle here, this is one of our regular oblique triangles that we've been talking about. We use A, B, and C as the vertices and then lowercase a, b, and c to represent the sides. I don't see an altitude drawn in here, but if I did draw in an altitude right here, I would have an H and then I'd have a right triangle. And then I'd be able to say the sine of C equals opposite over hypotenuse, which is H over A. And then if I were to take that and plug it in, um, work that around, solve it for H and plug it in over here, what I would end up coming up with is a formula that looks like this. And this is called uh, the side angle side formula. So this is what we'll use when we're given the side an angle on the side. So we're not given the height. We don't have a height here in this in this triangle. There's no altitude drawn in. So like I said, we could picture that there is one and then we'd use trig and we'd come up with this expression here. And so now we don't worry about having height or not. We just worry about having two sides and an included angle in between them. And that's what's called the side angle side. So when I'm given the values of A, B, and psi or angle C, I can use this formula right here. And I plug in for A, I plug in for B, and I plug in the angle measure for C, and I can determine the area of this triangle now. If I'm given sides B and C and the included angle A, I would use this formula. If I'm given sides A and C and the included angle B, I would use this formula here. So whenever I'm given two sides of a triangle and the included angle between them, I would use one of these formulas depending on which two sides and which angle it was. Sometimes you'll see area written like this. It'll say area of a triangle, so you'll see a little triangle drawn in there. Other times the book actually represents area with a capital K. Um, and the reason for that is mostly because instead of using a capital A for area, we've been using it quite a bit as an angle name. So we don't want to get confused with that. So they just use a capital K. But in most of what we'll do, I'll just write out the whole word area to represent the area of one of our triangles. So this is one group of formulas that we can use when we're given the side and include an angle on another side. The other formula that we'll be able to use is the side-side-side formula, also known as Heron's formula for the Greek mathematician who discovered it. And this is what we'll use when we're given all three sides of a triangle and not given the height or altitude. So in this case, I have sides A, B, and C given to me. So this formula has two parts. The first part is we come up with this expression for S, which is one half the sum of the side lengths, A plus B plus C. So the first thing we're gonna do is find this value for S. Then what we're gonna do is plug it into this formula here, which is the square root of S times S minus A, times s minus b, times s minus c. And again, we have values for a, b, and c, and so all we're going to do here is plug in. And that's all we're doing up here too. We're just gonna plug in. 
Uh, we're not going to have to solve these. We're not going to have to use like inverse sine or anything like that. It's really should be as simple as our first basic formula that we remember from geometry, one half base times height. All we're doing again is plugging in numbers here and computing. So let's do a couple examples. First one we'll do here is to find the area of this triangle and we have triangle A, B, and C. We say that angle C is 30 degrees and then if we look at this that means that side A is 6 because that's the side that's opposite angle A and side B is 8 because that's the side that's opposite angle B and so we'd flip back in our notebook or on the previous page and we'd see which formula should I use here and we're going to use the side angle side formula because we're given the side A the included angle C and then the other side B so our formula for area that we're going to use here is one half times A times B times the sine of C and so that is one half times six times eight times the sine of 30 degrees. And you can take this and plug that into your calculator if you'd like. Just make sure that your calculator is in degrees and not radians. And you would get 12 as your answer. And remember, this is area. So whenever we uh, write area, when we write the answer, we're going to use square units in this case. We just use the generic units. If this were to say like six inches and eight inches, we'd use square inches or inches squared. Um, if it was meters, we'd use meters squared and so on. Just wanna make sure that we're always answering our area as a value of square units. Okay, so that would be an example of using one of the side angle side formulas. Let's do an example where we're gonna use Heron's formula. So in this case, we have our three different side lengths. So this here would be side C, because it's opposite of angle C. This is A, and this is side B. And so the first thing that we want to do is figure out the value for S. S is one half the sum of A plus B plus C. So S is one half of 2 plus 3 plus 3. So it's 1 half of uh, 2 plus 6, so that's 1 half of 8. So S equals 4. Okay, so that's the first part. That's part 1. Now we're going to take that and figure out what the area of our triangle is using our formula where it's S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. And we just plug in for all our values, S is 4, S minus A will be 4 minus 2, S minus B will be 4 minus 3, and S minus C is 4 minus 3 as well. So then when we plug this in, we get 4 times 2 times 1 times 1, which is the square root of 8. And we can break that down, right? So if you recall, uh, we're going to have square roots in a lot of these ones that use Heron's formula. So remember, you got to simplify your square root. And as a quick refresher, the square root of 8 breaks down to the square root of 4 times the squ square root of 2, right? Because 4 times 2, sorry, that marker kind of ran together there. Um, 8 equals 4 times 2. I can actually make this jump from that step right there. And the square root of 4 simplifies as 2, and the square root of 2 is as simplified as that gets. So really our final answer is 2 times the square root of 2 square units, or 2 radical 2 square units would be our final answer for the area of this triangle here with the three sides given to us. Okay, so for right now, if you can get it to the square root of 8, um, I'll accept that, but we really should remember that we should break this down and simplify it and write it as 2 radical 2. Okay, so let's get some practice in with these. Um, you can use your textbook and page 543 
you do numbers 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 19. That gives you some great practice with both types of formulas. Uh, it gives you uh, some practice where they draw in the triangles and other ones where they just um, kind of give you the lengths of the different sides or angle measures uh, just by name without drawing in the diagram. So complete those six problems after watching the video. You can go back to the first page and pause it so that the formulas are up on the screen for you if you'd like. And bring those to class with you tomorrow and we'll give them a check and we'll go over any questions you might have. All right, have a great night.